What's going on, YouTube folks out there, Facebook friends? My name is Zodomir, and this is the Hard Black Truth. And uh, enjoying some of this rain here. You know, I really didn't have it in my mind to make this video. If you follow me in any way, and you have any kind of social media accounts, you have experienced the same thing I've experienced, and that is a a division, right, between individuals who are really dogmatic about voting and individuals like myself who may have either voted in reluctance or not voted at all, right? Um... And both sides are protesting against one another heavily. And in the midst of that, I wish people would, would just exercise some critical thought. And, you know, what's crazy is I'm sure they're probably saying the same thing, right? Because everyone thinks that they're a genius. But here, here's, my, here's my take on the whole thing. <clears throat> there, there are many black folks who are really dogmatic about voting. And... Two, three weeks from today, two, three weeks from today, you mark my words. You're not going to see the same amount of fervor. You're, you're, you're not going to see everyone pretending to be a Fox News analyst or a CNN contributor, right? Um, because everyone thinks that they, they know politics. And I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm like some politics genius. I know I followed it enough to the point where I'm disgusted because I've realized, I've come to realize, and if anybody is honest with themselves, you will admit to yourself that, you know, this idea of voting Republican or Democrat is like, do you want to vote for the left fang or do you want to vote for the right fang? You know, you're still, you're still going to get the same snakehead. <laughs> but we've been convinced in, in this idea that we must have the left fang because the right fang is too harsh. And, and there's so much confusion being, being put out there that you got individuals like uh, Kanye West or Candace Owens that can come out and convince a great many of our own black youth that, you know, the left fang has been letting you down for a very long time. So it's about time for you to change it up and leave the left fang. Now, they're very careful not to talk about going to the right fang, right? Because then that opens up the debate into, into digging deeper. And, and they're not concerned with digging deeper because ultimately you will have turned off this individual. And their purpose is to try to sway these votes from the Democratic Party over to the Republican Party. And they're using our collective confusion and inability to organize against us. As simply put, what's going on? Republicans themselves, they don't waste a lot of time trying to garner the black vote. So these little pet token Negro projects that they got with the likes of Candace Owens and, and others, you know, they're, they're willing to, to, to throw a little cash that way to see how much traction it'll take. But Republicans have by and large written us off and Democrats no longer come to us or even offer to sit at us at any table. They just tell us to go out and vote. Right. They don't come to us with any agenda, nor are we requiring them to come to us with an agenda. And I think that's what has a lot of these Negroes scared out there. And I say it just like that. I believe many of you are scared and frightened at the thought of doing something that goes above and beyond the basic act of casting a ballot. Because you've been told that that was the American thing to do. You've been told that your voice counts. You've been told that you were actually taking some, some significant action. 
right? And, and, and the thing is that black folks need to understand is when it comes to us, we got a lot of shit going on. And, and going to the, to, to the ballot box and casting a vote is, is really dismal among the things that we need to get done. Now, there's nothing wrong with voting, right? But we should have a purpose behind it. And right now, we simply don't, which is why Democrats take our votes for granted, which is why folks can convince the youth to leave the Democratic Party and in hopes that they will trickle over to the Republican Party. And guess what? There's evidence that some of that may have even worked. Some of it may even be gender politics. But you got the state of Florida where we had Andrew Gillum, who was a hopeful. I never really supported the brother because when I see him, I see Obama. And I already had eight years of that experience. And while it's nice to say that my president or my state representative is black, at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> like I, I say it all the time. Black folks are talking about, you know, my president's black. We're going to paint the White House black. And the only colors we ended up seeing on that White House, aside from white, was the LGBTQI rainbow. Straight up. And this isn't a knock to them. This is to say that the priorities definitely weren't where we thought that they were going to be. Black folks didn't get anything offered to us. We didn't. And I've seen people talk about, oh, it's a red herring to sit here and say uh, what the black agenda is. How about you present them a black agenda? And I'm just like, man, you guys, you, you guys sound so phony and fraudulent and you're trying to make excuses for this. First of all, you don't present anybody with a black agenda. Our purpose should be to purchase our politicians. If you give, if you fund the money, if you get organized get the right amount of resources up and put somebody in office, they're going to have your black agenda. There it is right there because you have some financial backing to stand on at this point. You don't go, I don't know where is it that these individuals feel that you can go to a politician that you have put no money in their coffers, right? They're getting they're getting their their campaign donations and and other things funded from these major corporations that are out there. Just hey, it's okay. We'll throw you fifty grand real quick. Just make sure you remember who to look out for when they talk about passing that new bill that might cost me some money. Yeah, they they get funded by them, but you give them your vote. But then you turn around and expect them to look out for you when your son gets shot eight times while running away and it's all captured on video. But we get laws passed like the Blue Lives Bill or whatever the hell that is. Right? As, as though there isn't enough punishment for, for causing any kind of harm to a quote-unquote police officer. People who are in jail serving terms of 20 years plus for killing a goddamn animal. How about that? And, and I'm speaking of a canine before I lose you, the police dog. I'm just saying that's how serious these laws are. But, we, you know, we turn around and pass extra laws on top of that. But when black folk get killed, when Sandra Bland gets locked up for refusing to put out a cigarette that she doesn't have to, ends up in jail... Murdered under suspicious circumstances. When we have black men being lynched, they're, st they're still lynching us. Understand that they're still lynching us. And, and, and these officials that we read enough to know that the FBI has told us time and time again, they've infiltrated law enforcement, the KKK and other white supremacist organizations. And when folks get lynched out in this country these same organizations turn around and say oh it's it's an it's a suicide it's a suicide young black man ain't got no reason in the world to kill himself but it's a suicide right and these are serious matters but our problem is that we want to integrate and be part of this society so much that we we do the things that that are 
worst among the traits of our society. So we're so narcissistic, all we believe about is doing me, I'm going to do me, I'm going to do me, I'm going to do me, that these atrocities happen time and time again, and we don't make a big fuss because, hell, it ain't happening to me. That's honestly how we act. But oddly enough, it's it's community and it's a coming together and it's fighting the power. And I'm going to put up this fist when it comes to casting a, a, a vote. And, and I ask you, what did you vote for? Who did you vote for? What, what agenda do they have for you? And you can't answer those questions. Go to your grandmother. Go to your great grandmother and ask them what they voted for and what, what has it accomplished for them in their life. And all you folks out here trying to be pseudo-intellectuals and talking about red herrings, you damn right we said it the way we said it. We mean it the way we mean it. And you can get mad at the language that we use, but the truth of the matter, the unrefutable, undeniable truth is that the gay community has an agenda and it gets pushed and they get laws passed, right? They fund their politicians. Their politicians in turn look out for them. The Hispanic community, they'll get together and get their funds right and put their politicians in place who then turn around and shit on the black folks. You know, they'll sit there and play that, you know, black and brown coalition every now and then. But the moment they get the opportunity, they'll tra they'll take a cra Just look at Florida. Look at how many of them voted against the black man. Now, granted, he wasn't the best candidate to begin with, but just why would they vote for this Republican? And the Republicans are giving them the most hell. That lets you know the mindset. We are in this by ourselves. We have nothing but each other. And I wish that people would just exercise a little bit of critical thinking when it comes to this whole voting process. Stop trying to use this as a way to shame people, as a way to scare people. We need to get out of that. It's it's crazy. I'm seeing I'm seeing a real parallel between the way folks have, have spoken about going to the ballot box and voting, and folks who are dogmatically religious. It, 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 there's a, there's the same aura. There is a religious fervor to the way these folks are talking about going out and voting, and that's fine. That's you. You want to do that? That's cool. I just say you should have something that you can say you voted for, right? And I'm saying this as someone who voted for Obama twice, and I voted for him because he was black. I voted for him because he had brown skin, and he was saying nice flowery things. He never actually said Black man, black woman, this is what we're going to do for you. He never actually said that. The only time Obama got real vocal about being black was when it came time to chastise us. When it came time to tell us how we was doing wrong. When it came time for him to, to talk to, down on us like, like he was Bill Cosby or something, oddly enough. And that's the truth. He had a buddy of his, uh, of his get arrested he had a buddy of his get arrested at his own home because police thought he was breaking in. No, no, his neighbors thought that he was breaking in. The police arrive, make a big scene. He proves that he's a resident there. Oh, but he got a little loud with these police officers. So the moment he, the moment he stepped foot onto his porch, the police officer arrested him. And Obama said he acted stupidly, which he did. And everybody jumped on Obama's case and he caved in. That let me know right there, like, nah, I, I can't support that. This brother, this man ain't supporting us. You got police officers just arresting people because they feel like it, because their feelings get hurt. And you can clearly see that that is the case. And you want to sit here and, and, and tiptoe around it. And you're the president of the United States of America. And you can't speak as boldly as you need to speak when it comes to these messed up situations. I still remember Shirley Sherrod. I still remember Shirley Sherrod. They they doctored a, t a, a tape and put it out there and said that she was racist and all these other things. And they forced her to pull over on the side of the road and submit her resignation over the phone. 
that was the weakness that came from Obama and the Democratic Party. I follow politics just enough to know that there's a lot of bullshit that I don't like. And I followed it well enough to know that Republican or Democrat, you're voting for the same thing at the end of the day. Those folks are going at each other and you think that they're just really opposed to one another. Nah, they just want to be the ones that get to push the button on your ass. That's really all that it is. That's really all that it is. And you sit here and allow yourself to be confused into thinking that one side is thinking of you and the other side isn't. And I know that they've done a very good job at putting it out there. And, and, and let's just be honest. We, we, we know exactly how we feel. Republicans don't give a damn about shit that we got going on. The Democrats will at least say, yeah, I, 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 feel, I feel your pain. I, I recognize that you are experiencing discomfort and I know that it's wrong. Will any of you do anything about it? Democrats, oh, well, see, we got to do this and we got to do that. And, you know, I'll say I'm sorry, but we really can't do anything about it because that would just be too controversial. I would rather take the hell no that I would get from the Republicans. Ask a Republican, are you, are you willing to do something about this? Hell no. I would rather receive that. And it is for that very reason why I enjoy having Trump in office. Because he continues to reveal. Number one, he continues to reveal how hateful this country is at its core. And he continues to reveal how cowardly some of our very own are. And I can appreciate him for that. And it sickens me that, that we, we are to the point now, and I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm, I know I'm being long-winded, but it's to the point now where we got folks like Roland Martin out here openly calling out Tariq Nasheed. And I'm going to tell you, sir, uh, uh, brother man, I don't know what you think this is. Um, you, you, you claim like you, you talk like you're, you're a really smart man. But the truth is that you should have figured out, and I don't know why you think it's going to go any other way. Two, two, three weeks from now, Roland, nobody's going to care about all the chucking and jiving you did about this election. Nobody's really going to give a damn. Everything is going to settle down. All of these wannabe Fox News contributors and wannabe CNN spokespersons and all these folks that consider themselves woke and they know that they've just, I just know that I'm following politics and I'm paying attention. That's why I'm casting my vote. All these individuals that I had boosting you up and, and gassing up your head, they're going to go about doing their own thing and you're going to go back to having no audience. You're going to go back to sub mediocrity. I just made that word up for you. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go back to being a nobody. Right? You're gonna go back to being a nobody. And whether you like it or not, the new black media is here to stay. We're not going anywhere. And the fact that you have a timeline of black people at war with one another over the basic idea of sitting out a vote lets you know that new black media is winning. We're getting the message out there. We're bringing forward intelligent thought. Folks are looking deeper into things. People that thought that they were playing chess are realizing, hell no, I'm still playing checkers. Folks are getting their awakening and they'll continue to get their awakening. Folks like you who continue to play these games well, all I can say is enjoy it while it lasts. Those are my thoughts. You guys let me know how you feel. Long Yao One here. Peace.